Hello and welcome to this video. My name is Martin Mwenda Kimadi, one of the Kenya Lift GMAT trainers. This video is part of a series through which uh, we share some of the um, materials and the content that we really offer our students through uh, our GMAT training program. And on the video, the primary focus is on understanding that they assess uh, in the students through uh, quantitative reasoning, verbal reasoning, and inter integrative reasoning, as well as uh, the writing that uh, one has to do for the GMAT exam. So uh, focusing on uh, the first two, that is uh, the GMAT verbal and GMAT quant, which are uh, primarily the ones that are going to determine one's score. There is a specific uh, format or a unique way through which uh, the GMAT test maker uh, test students' uh, level of critical reasoning uh, through, of course, uh, mathematical concepts as well as uh, uh, verbal reasoning. And that's the reason why now we've uh, set up this video to help students understand uh, the logic that is used uh, to achieve this test of uh, critical reasoning. So uh, to begin with, begin with uh, one needs to understand uh, the scoring of the GMAT exam and uh, the most noteworthy part of this uh, scoring is that uh, it's based on percentiles and that's to say that once you get a particular score it's uh, related to the number of test takers who did that test at that particular time and then uh, it's scored in terms of uh, the percentile you're ranked uh, in terms of what percentile of students, uh, what percentage of students were you able to beat in that particular uh, exam? Say, for instance, if you're able to beat 70% uh, of the test takers at that uh, point in time, then you would be uh, in the 70th uh, percentile. Yeah, this is because you're able to, uh, your score would be in the 70th percentile. This is because you're able to beat 70% uh, of uh, the test takers. So then, someone who is in the 99th percentile would have beaten 99% of all uh, the test takers. And what is the purpose of using this percentile? The purpose is to ensure that the test maker is able to relate uh, the scores of uh, the test takers to the population of uh, the test takers. And uh, in effect, then it means that once, uh, when uh, one does a test say today, uh, their percentile ranking should be reflective of all the test takers at that particular time point in time. And the reason for that is because with time, uh, the populations do change such that you might find, uh, say, a few years ago, that the test takers were actually scoring better in uh, quant than they, they, had, they were doing in verbal, and then they changed of course, based on uh, the reason for the change being the fact that we have uh, more materials to do studies, we have, uh, we have more trainers and such uh, videos which help students, of course, to improve the understanding of the GMAT exam. Then, of course, if you, you are to try to relate the different um, uh, test takers without using a percentile, then it would mean that uh, it would appear that test takers who did the, uh, the test a few years ago who are worse compared to uh, the ones who are doing it today who have more resources, more materials and all of that. So then for one to achieve a clear indication of uh, the students who are taking that test at that particular time, then you need to have these uh, percentile scoring. Then schools also, which of course, uh, the reason why people do the GMAT exam is so that they can uh, get into, uh, into business schools. You, you 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 expect that they are going to look at not only uh the the specific score that one is going to get say for instance you scored a, a 720 they will they will also want to get uh to look at your percentile because it shows them this 720 what percentile is it in terms of you know the population of test takers at that time and the reason they are looking at the percentile is because you know, a particular university might say that it looks uh, to admit only the top 10% uh, of students. So in a population uh, of test takers who uh, probably excelled in the GMAT exam such that, you know, you, you have the majority of students uh, scoring above uh, 700, 
for such a school to maintain, you know, that policy where they're taking 10%, you know, the top 10%, they would need to look at the percentile. So that which then would show, you know, it would relate those, those scores that the student got to uh, that particular uh, population. And then <clears throat> if you want to take advantage of uh, uh, the scoring of the GMAT and the fact that it's based on percentage, which of course relates to uh, the populations, you actually need to get good scores on both uh, the verbal and the quant. And the reason is that at times you might find that uh, the test takers who are doing the exam at a particular point in time are very good in uh, a particular session. Say, for instance, they are so good in quant, uh, probably because at that particular time, most of the students who are doing the test would want to go to a school that is uh, uh, that offers, you know, uh, STEM courses which of course would need more of uh, quantitative reasoning than verbal and such students of course you'd expect that they would get uh, better scores in quant than they would in verbal and for that reason then the scoring would be uh, skewed towards uh, verbal showing that you know it shows of course that these students are so good in, in quant so uh, if you want to excel yeah, within such a population then of course you need to have good scores in both uh, verbal and quant since it would separate you you know from all the others it shows that you are uh, you, you are not only good in quant but as well as in in verbal and of course if you are to nail just one section the, the the excellence in that particular section would not uh overcome the deficit in the other it would it would mean that you're going to tank tank your score uh, regardless of you know how well you performed in, in one section say for instance one got uh uh, 46 in quant and then at the same time they had a, a, a 20 in verbal you know such a student who wouldn't be in the uh, top uh, 70 percent because of this uh, poor score in verbal and in, in a similar way if you are to score a 46 in, uh, in, in verbal and then at the same time get a, a 20 in quant uh, you you'd still uh, your your overall score would still be uh, a failing score because you know we can't uh, you know we can't we can't score you uh, rationally we can't score you as a good student because you know you you you're just excelling in one part of uh, the reasoning that is required for you, right? Then uh, the next thing that that one needs to know is that uh, the GMAT exam is computer adaptive and it achieves this computer adaptive uh, nature through four key aspects one is that you can only do one question at a time then you can't go back to the previous question and then you can't skip questions and of course then the test is going to respond uh to your performance in the previous question not that you can do one question at a time which means then that your score uh once you uh completed that particular question and you, you're now moving on to the next your your score or your performance in that particular question is going to influence uh the type of question you're going to see next next and this means then that you 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 actually need uh uh to be aware that you can't you know uh think that if i did uh well in a particular question and then i i failed in the next question it's going you, you, you can, uh, in a way, uh, take advantage of this uh, computer adaptive test. Actually, that's not possible. All you can do is try, you know, to be uh, excellent through, of course, uh, practice. Um, and then uh, the fact that you can't go to the previous question uh, enables the test to uh, retain uh, this feature of responding uh, to your performance. Because, of course, if you would go back to the previous question and uh, manipulate your score and you know say improve your score in the previous question then uh, the test wouldn't be able to respond correctly to your performance yeah and then if of course you'd skip a question it will still not be able to respond uh to your performance because it needs that that data for it to be able to respond uh to 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 your performance and then the objectives of this uh, computer adaptive nature of the gmat exam one is to achieve accuracy the test needs uh, the test makers need to uh, give accurate representations of uh, the test takers in that uh, if one was able to uh, to guess 
you know, uh, two questions or three questions in a series and got them right. And the test responded, you know, the test is going to respond uh, to your performance in that particular question. And since you got it right in the first question, uh, the test gives you a harder question. And another guess you get it right, it gives you a harder question. Of course, your luck can't last you uh, too long. At, at some point, it's going to uh, catch up with you. And now you're going to face a question that you can't actually uh, handle. And your guess is, of course, your luck is going is not going to last forever. So at that point, then uh, the test is able, uh, the test is, uh, the, the adaptive nature of the test is able to ensure that all these uh, lucky guesses are not sustained and they are not uh, rewarded too much, you know, such that uh, once, you've guessed uh say two questions and go them right it has be it becomes too difficult for you and even to uh, manipulate the guesses becomes uh more harder yeah and at the same time it 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 uh compensates unlucky errors say a student who was uh, unlucky in their computations and got a particular question wrong they would get an easier question which of course allows them uh to get back on track then the test is also uh, able to achieve time efficiency because uh, once a student, uh, uh, once a student who is, of course, uh, a, a very good student does a test that has so many uh, easy questions, you know, this student is going to rush over those questions because they appear easy to them. Then, you know, there isn't efficiency in, in the time uh, this student uh, takes in doing this exam. Rather, you would want such a, a good student to be focusing on the questions that are actually at their performance level. Yeah. And at the same time, uh, a student who is not as strong, it, there is there wouldn't be any value in subjecting such a student to very difficult questions uh, or facing or uh, what would uh, present more value at that point would be uh, to take these students through questions that are uh, uh, correspond to their performance level. And this is only achievable through uh, the computer adaptive nature of uh, the GMAT exam. You're watching Success with Bob Mwiti Show presented to you by AppStack America. AppStack America is a consulting company that helps immigrants find amazing higher education and job opportunities in the tech industry in the United States. You can find our programs by going to www appstechamerica.com appstech america we wake you up to the unlimited potential within you all right then there are key foundations of uh, the gmat exam and uh, uh one of them is that the test is based on uh critical thinking or critical reasoning as uh, the name suggests in uh when you look at the sessions, you have uh, verbal reasoning and quant reasoning. Both, both of them are focused on uh, critical thinking. The test is looking at how well can you review a question or uh, the information that you're given, looking for clues uh, from you know that information that you're given, and then trying to find the most effective approach to arriving at the required solution. Yeah, and of course, the purpose uh, for the exam to uh, look at critical thinking is because it, it's looking uh, to score students or place students in uh, business school, which actually requires uh, people who can think critically because that's the environment of, uh, that's the business environment. It requires people who can think critically. Therefore, the exam must be uh, able to examine exactly that, the critical thinking ability of students. It also uh, looks at your ability to recognize uh, patterns. Say, for instance, uh, a particular question, uh, say in, in quant, is tested uh, in a particular way. Say uh, there is a concept uh, in algebra, it's tested in a particular way on uh, in several occasions. So you'd be expected as a student to be able to identify the patterns in 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 the phrasing of questions and use that to your advantage. Yeah, and of course, if you're able to do that, it 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 highlights an ability new which aligns uh, to the objective of uh, the GMAT exam, which is to place you in a business uh, school. Then the third one is your ability to paraphrase uh, this. Uh, question stems. Say you're given a question stem that is uh, that uh, has 
large and difficult to understand prose, then you'd be required to uh, to be able to reduce all that information into simple, you know, uh, pieces of information that are actually understandable and from which you can uh, derive what is most important and what leads you to, to getting the correct answer. And again, this is another aspect of uh, someone who would be suited to going to a business school and ending up in a business uh, environment. Then the final one is the ability to pay attention to the right details. And in this case, uh, an example would be uh, when you find a question in quantitative reasoning that is looking for uh, approximate values. In such a case, you know the the expectation would be that uh, if you're not able to uh, notice these keywords, then you would actually be responding to the to, to the question stem in a wrong way. Until the moment that when one is able to uh, recognize and you know, notice that this is the keyword in this particular question, then they're able to respond to exactly what is required of them in uh, that question. And still, uh, this is another feature of the GMAT exam, which enables it to achieve its primary objective of placing students in business schools. You can only be successful in business school and as well as later when you're working in a business environment, if you're able to pay attention to the right details, right? Then they are, they are, uh, with all this information about the GMAT exam, one needs to know how uh, they can excel. Of course, after you've learned about uh, the GMAT logic and uh, what the GMAT entails and you know what you can leverage, one is being able to pace yourself. Yeah. You say you're 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 looking at uh 30 questions in quantitative reasoning, you want to uh, do all these questions within uh, the provided time of 75 minutes, you know. So for you to be able to complete all these questions within uh, the, 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 the given time, you actually need to be able to pace yourself such that you avoid spending too much time on a particular question. And also remember that the, the more you spend time, the more time you spend on a particular question, uh, the higher the chances of you failing in that particular question because these it highlights um, uh, the, the fact that you spend one is spending so much time on a particular question highlights uh, the, the weakness or uh, their inability to understand exactly what is required of them in that question. And the reason for that is that all GMAT questions have uh, a means or a way of solving them or arriving at the answer within less than two minutes. So you need to be able to pace yourself and one of the things that can help you achieve that and of uh, at the same time help you in uh, uh, becoming uh, in excelling in GMAT exam is being systematic in your approach. This applies uh, particularly in uh, data sufficiency questions where say for instance you have uh, the, the usual answers A, B, C, D, and E and when you're eliminating your answers you need you would want to have you know a system uh, of eliminating the answers, answer choices that you deem are uh, not correct or uh, the, the, be, them being you know, far away from uh, the truth of, that is required of that particular situation. Yeah? You need to have uh, a system of eliminating the answer choices to avoid, you know, the, the, uh, to avoid any, any uh, distractions that might arise or confusions that are, might arise from you know, the lack of uh, such a system. Yeah? So a system would enable you to, to be sure, say for instance, uh, in, in, in data sufficiency, we always know that the first choice uh, means that uh, the first statement is sufficient, the second one that uh, the second statement is sufficient, the third choice C means that uh, the two statements together are sufficient, choice D that uh, the two statements separately in isolation are sufficient, and the last one that uh, the first uh, both statements are insufficient. So, if I was to test and see that uh, the first statement is sufficient, then I would be sure that my possible answers are A and D. Then I wouldn't have any need at all to be considering choices B, C, and E. And then when I evaluate the second statement and it turns out to be sufficient, then automatically my answer becomes choice D. So, if I have a system of eliminating 
uh, the answer choices that are uh, that have deemed incorrect, then I'll uh, you know I'll limit the tendency to to go back to consider these choices, which would probably confuse uh, you in the process. Then you also need to remain diligent as you're you know doing uh, the test throughout this uh, period of the test, and the reason for that is to enable you to avoid uh, preventable errors and careless pitfalls, which of course, uh, uh, regardless of the fact that the tests are being a uh, computer adaptive does uh, compensate such errors, you don't want them to happen. You know, you want to take advantage and uh, take advantage of the preparation that you've gone through yeah, and make sure that uh, you've left nothing to chance so that the way for you to achieve that is by remaining diligent then you also need to be able to identify the questions that you can't actually solve yeah at, at a point a point is going to come where you know there's a certain question uh one can't can't solve of course there are hard students who can actually get uh the maximum score yeah but then for a student who can't uh whose ability is not at that level then they need to be able to identify the questions that they can solve and then from that uh they can you know uh utilize uh, a guessing strategy a strategy that is going to enable them uh limit the possibility of getting that uh, particular uh, question wrong and the only way one that uh, one can get to that point where they can identify questions that they can solve is when they've actually done uh, extensive uh, practice with those questions and they're able to identify that this question I know to uh, to handle it. This question follows a particular pattern, but this question is actually uh, strange to me. I haven't faced it before. Then I know I can't solve it. Even looking at uh, the concepts that I've uh, learned, I can't solve it. So there isn't any value in spending so much uh, time on that particular question. Yeah? then you would actually need to employ uh, a guessing strategy that you know has uh, as a way of uh, tilting uh, you know giving you an edge in that particular situation okay then the last thing would be to remain calm yeah, and maintain one school and this this comes in because you know when one uh fails to maintain their cool during the exam they might panic uh or, or end up in you know getting distracted and such are the issues that would make a very strong student end up uh scoring uh lowly in the GMAT exam and one uh last uh, rule of thumb what that one would need to 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 take note is that missing one question is actually not as damaging as losing one score during uh, the GMAT uh, test. Thank you. That has been it uh, for this video.